Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our June hot stock panel. Uh, low dollar stocks with explosive profits that are under the radar somewhere along those lines. You're going to get some great stock picks to consider today. Uh, my name is Glenn Tompkins, Senior Instructor here at VectorVest. Always my pleasure to host these panels. Today, I have an all-star cast of people, and one that we've not had on before, uh, in case you didn't know, is Stan Heller, our Managing Director here, or up north in Canada. Um, if you can hear me loud and clear, please, by all means, respond in the affirmative, uh, preferably with VV Nation to let me know that everything is happening the way it's supposed to happen because my uh, producer who's sitting side saddle to me, Joey, uh, is the guy that makes sure that everybody looks good. He doesn't have to do much work with me, but for my other two guests, he may have to do just a little bit of work, help him out a little bit. Um, but uh, we're all glad to be here. I see the VV Nations coming across. Excellent uh, that we're coming hey, along. I, I, I know. My uh, my other two guests, they're awesome. But uh, I'm going to do a little bit of house cleaning real quick. Um, one, um, Big thing is, if you like the content you see today, please comment in the comment section. If you like what you see, hit the like button. The more likes that we get, the more the algorithm will share this video after it's done, after it's recorded, it'll share it out to a lot of people across the broad spectrum of YouTube land. So please, please, please hit the like button and get other people out there. And if you can, by all means, if you can take a couple of seconds right now to share this link for this live, uh, this live stream, um, Put it on your social media. Let people know what's going on right now, that they can partake in it. Let's get some other people in here. We're trying to grow our channel. Talking about growing our channel, if you're new to our channel, please subscribe to the channel. This is our second channel. This is our streaming channel. We also have another channel where we do daily videos every day on that channel on stocks that you may be interested in along the way as well. Stan Heller, who's here today, does a monthly international user group presentation every month here on our live stream channel as well. So you really do want to subscribe to the channel. You want to hit the bell icon so that you're alerted every time new content comes out. All right. Um, our guests will introduce themselves in a moment. And we will have a giveaway of a Vector Vest. Oh, man, can you do me a favor? Can you go get my coffee? It's in the coffee. What? Well, it's there. I, I didn't bring it back with me. It's not in my job description. Listen, can you please? It's not in my job description. You, you are my... Go get it. I can't. I'm talking to the people right, right now. All right. all right. Unless Todd wants to do it or something. I don't. <laughs> but I, I, we, 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 uh, we are going to give away a Vector Vest mug. I will be drinking out of that mug as soon as Joey brings the mug to me. All right. And uh, we were giving one away. And what is the? what do they have to type in? Uh, mug. Type in mug. If you type in mug now, you'll be entered in to win a free Vector Vest mug. Or you can look down below. You'll see uh, our merchandise store where you can purchase your own mug as well. But we will be giving one away. Um, da -da 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 -da. And one other thing, we do have a Father's Day bonanza uh, in lieu of Father's Day coming up on Sunday, June 20th. Uh, Joey's going to put that up for a second. Oh. It's already up. Oh, I need to just click it. Oh, oh they can see it. Uh, the Father's Day or the Father's Week, uh, June 14th to the 18th, five profitable lessons for worry-free investing. You can enter and register right at www.vectorvest.com forward slash FD for Father's Day. All right. Now that we've got some of that stuff out of the way, uh, for those of you who are new and do not have access to the VectorVest software just quite yet, we are offering a 30-day trial to the VectorVest software for 99 cents. Again, look down below this video. In the description, you will see a link for that as well. All right. As Joey is so nicely going to get my coffee, I'm going to, when he comes back, we're going to bring up our other two presenters, and then we're going to get started. Man, Joey, why does it take you this long? Oh, Can you put any more coffee in this thing? Is it that full up? <laughs> oh, so Joey. I'm not even reaching over my laptop. Oh, oh, man. And it's hot. I can't pick it up. Ow, ow. It's hot, <laughs> hot, 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 hot. Ooh-wee. Hi. Right. So now we got well, that's it is the hot stocks panel. It is <laughs> it is the hot stocks panel. So as we say that, as Joey brings them up, 
Uh, here are my other two presenters. Again, your very own Stan Heller. And, uh, you know, I think it's awesome that he's here. This is the first time he's come to a hot stock panel. Todd Schaefer is also here. He's been to a couple of the hot stock panels. And um, I think uh, my Canadian folks really are going to appreciate the stocks that he brings to the table. They will be Canadian stocks as well. I've heard that asked a lot of times, can you look at other countries in these panels? Well, today we will do that. And Stan is here. Uh, Todd is here. And um, as they come on, cause Todd is going to start us off. As they come on, they're going to introduce who they are. They're going to give their picks. We're going to analyze them all. Uh, uh, we're going to all give some value add to their picks, and we're going to go through that way. So all my stuff is done for the time being. It only took me six minutes, Joey. It's pretty good. For only you. took six minutes That's to get good. us there. You're and, still talking though. I know. And we're going to start with Todd. Todd Schaefer. Todd, come on. Let everybody know who you are, what you do, and let's talk about your picks. Well, I'm a straight man to Glenn. First of all, that's my that's my primary directive. After that, I'm the manager of research. Been, been with VectorVest now what 14 years or so, so it's been some time. I'm the uh, I'm the nerdy process guy as the manager of research. So uh, a lot of the times when we're talking about these uh, these stock picks, I like to share the process that I use that got me to the candidates to begin with, so that you can play along at home, kind of as you develop your own process uh, to find some hot stocks. So I'd start off with. The definition of hot stocks because each of us is probably going to vary a little bit but when i read the the thesis was explosive low price stocks flying under the radar there's a couple operative things going on here first of all explosive to me means that i've got some fast moving price second piece is that they're low priced right and that finally flying under the radar institutions haven't picked them up yet so that can go hand in hand with being low priced but also smaller market caps. So for me, loosely, that means a market cap under 2 billion, less than uh, seven figures of average volume, rising RT, that's the acceleration part. And then if I can find those kinds of candidates that also have uh, price and volume bumps, as well as rising earnings, then that's even better. Particularly, you know, as markets go through their cycles right now, the momentum plays are getting uh, challenged, if you will. So a lot of a, a lot of avoiding that kind of problem, along with the meme stock problem. Uh, if I can have some rising earnings in there, so much the better. So the first thing I'd like to do is, Joey, if we can, let's put up some search criteria, and I'll show you the the searches that I ran. And let's start off with the uh, the first the one is up favorites. there. Yeah, thank you. You got it. And I'm. I'm going to kind of look at it. I don't know if I'm on camera or not, but basically these are the search parameters and it's a variation on uh, high CI prospects, which is uh, actually, can we go to the Unisearch tool easily enough? Eh, forget it. Stay right there. Basically high CI prospects are stocks that are, have been flat channeling price action that get pops in volume and price action which are indicative of an, uh, an ensuing price trend becoming established. So in the cast of uh, parameters here, you can see it. I'm looking for a price greater than a buck, but less than 10. Average volume greater than 25,000 shares. Now, it could be 7 million still. I didn't put an upper limit on it. I just lowered the usual 100,000 threshold so that I can see stocks that are flying under the radar. Next, we're looking for a new high over 26 weeks. That's from Dr. Delito. But basically, we're shorting the time frame because these are hot stocks, right? So I don't need a 52-week high. A six-month high is just fine. They're in a stock watch list called the HCIP Favorites, and I'll show you that when we get back into the program. But that pro that is a VectorVest maintained list of candidates and I'll show you how we build that here in just a moment. So get rid of the pink sheets. Market cap has to be less than 2,000 million, which I think is still 2 billion if I did my math right. Stock price is above yesterday's high, and it's in the upper half of the day's range. That's a, a thing I add commonly just because I'm looking for stocks today that are up beating yesterday's high. 
kind of as a minimum entry kind of consideration. And then finally, RT trending higher over the last two weeks is the acceleration factor. All right, so that's the search. And let's just stay with that and go into uh, my pick here. And let's talk about that methodology a little bit. Uh, I think I have control here. Yes, you do. Yeah, so I'm going over to the viewers tab and I'm looking for HCIP favorites. Is this alphabetical? Oh, this is mine. This is the YouTube's hot stock panel. All right. Can I blow it up here for you? Yeah, go go ahead. See the folder high CI prospects. I won't blow it up too much. HCIP favorites is the maintained, the vector best maintained watch list. These are stocks that were a result of the high CI prospect search in Unisearch. So let's go take a look at that. So we curate this list. We take the raw search result of high CI uh, prospects. I'll just alpha sort. And let me show you I have the right one. High CI prospects, there we go. High CI prospects is looking for stocks that have been in a channel for the last 100 days. They're hitting a 52 week high. They have a relatively low average volume. And here's the magic of this price volume, the percent, the percent volume change over the average is 200% or hey. twice the normal or average volume. Hold on for a second. For those people who are having mm -hmm. issues with the blurriness, please go down to the gear icon. Uh, change the resolution to 1080 using the gear icon below the video. That should fix you. That should fix you. Okay, sorry, Todd. Yeah, I'm sorry. So that's the search. The search, the stocks that come back from that are then curated into that watch list on an ongoing basis. So I built my search, as we saw, to look at that high CI uh, prospects watch list of good candidates. For my candidates. So here's my first find. All I have to do is figure out how to get back there. Um, no, go Correct. to viewers. Scroll up and find six, nine. There it is. The second from the third from the bottom, right there. Nope, right there. there. That one. That one. There we go. All right. So FRD is my first candidate, and while we're here on the VectorVest analysis, let's pause here and let's just run through it uh, while we're at it. All right, so uh, Friedman Industries is a steel processor that make pipe and sheet steel. They are currently, uh, oh, in the news, they just opened or announced the opening of a new facility in Texas, another mill. It will be the most advanced uh, electronic or electric arc furnace mill in the world. So that one is slated for uh, opening in Texas. So some growth prospects there, but if we look at the vector vest analysis itself, we can see that first of all, we are overvalued, price at 1389, value at 861. So unfavorable. Upside potential RV, 0.71, so unfavorable. RS at 0.95, 500 is under one so let's call that average for the database in a very up, strong upward price trend they are however losing 50 cents 57 cents a share and increasing those losses at a rate of four percent annually now both of those numbers are on the uptrend but they're still negative they're just less negative negative. and currently they are paying a dividend that's yielding a, a half percent but when your earnings yield is negative I wouldn't call that a very safe dividend. So I'm not I'm not an investor here looking for dividend income on this stock. All right. But that's kind of the analysis of FRD. And it's a fairly speculative play, right? With weak fundamentals. All right. Let's now look at the chart. And I'm going to stretch this out a little bit so that you can see kind of the idea. Remember, what we're looking for 
is here's this price that was in this wide channel, uptrending, but fairly quiet. Right? If you look at the volume numbers across the bottom of the graph, if you look at RT, relatively flat. So quiet price action that gets punctuated suddenly by these spikes in volume and in price. And it's those kinds of breakouts that we're looking for on these prospects for potential kickoff of the trend. Now, FRD tends to stair step, right? It, it advances, consolidates, makes an advance, consolidates, advanced again now and is consolidating again. Yes, I would prefer that it be smoother price action, particularly if I was on the investing side of this game, right? But just analyzing the, the chart, price is going bottom left, upper right, particularly for hot stocks. I'm usually in a, in a three month window or so. The price, while it has made, been making these stair steps, has been well supported by the 40-day moving average. I think that's 40-day, right? And on this last gap, we've gotten overextended from that 40-day price average. RT takes a nice elevation on that gap, although it's starting to taper off in the consolidation. And volume is starting to taper off here as well on that move. But we can see the earnings, while negative, they're, they are improving over time. So that's kind of the setup here and to take advantage of this stock, it's more speculative. I'm on the prospects of their business continuing to expand, right? And their eventual uh, approach of profitability, but I'm not an investor here. So I'm taking a much more traders kind of approach. So I'm looking for price to follow through here, right? I made the gap. Now I'd like to see it continue to rise. So the more prudent entry would be either take out this these highs in the congestion, maybe take out this prior high on the wick would be the more prudent approach into the stock, a little more aggressive, start accumulating now with a threshold, a stop loss threshold below the gapping candle, looking for a significant move back into the gap. So that's the trade for FRD and looking for these price pops as an indication of Stocks that haven't hit anybody's radar yet because it's been fairly quiet leading up into these events. They're just now starting, uh, hopefully, to pick up some exposure as they start making their advance. Any feedback, fellas? I'll start with you, Stan. Yeah, I, I, I really like it, and I'm really glad you mentioned, Todd, the sort of the quiet period before the breakout and earnings rising at the same time. You've got some big volume spikes in there, which I really like. Um, I was noticing if you put it on a five-year graph, even though you are looking at a really strong momentum play, you've got a really nice kind of a cup with handle going there and a breakout from that cup with handle. So that's taking off beautifully from that. And I love those new buy ratings and, um, you know, especially this one has broken across the um, the resistance area on the, on the five year weekly. So um, overall, I like the pick. As you say, it's uh, it's a kind of a momentum play. Uh, some of the fundamentals not as strong, um, particularly sales growth and so on. But um, really, just a momentum play that looks like it's set up to to can keep going nicely from here. So good choice. I like that it's hitting, breaking across, making a new five-year high. I have a hard time seeing cup and handles and head and shoulders and <laughs> and bulls and bears and uh, and tricks are for kids. You silly rabbit! I can't find it. I can't find any of that stuff. But I do like uh, a couple of things. One, looking at the five-year graph, I do like that the stock, if you drew a trend line, broke out of the downtrend. I like that it came across the 40-day moving average and just has been riding it up, 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 up. I'm going to put it back on a three-month graph, bottom left, top right, under the radar. Earnings is the engine that drives the stock's price higher. RT is up there. And volume. Volume has been pretty steady. Volume has been pretty steady. And I like the idea of, you know, if you want to get in now, you can. That would be your half point, you know, if you if you get in now and you put some money in, 
Once it gets to that level, maybe you take half off the table. If you want more confirmation, wait till it goes above the high. But as Todd says, also, if the trade goes against you, here's a good level of support. Um, that a couple of things will happen. It will break down below support and start fading this gap that happened. Once that happens, that's probably a good time. If that happens, that's probably a good time uh, to get out of the stock. But you notice that each time on these Sequoia moves, that the stock never actually broke down below that level of the gap. Look right here. There was the gap. Look at that. The stock never broke down below the gap. Formed a level, nice little level of res, uh, support, and the same thing here. Um, so this could really be setting up. I like to play. I like to pay. I see Cafe Bustello patterns. Really, John? Because I don't, <laughs> I don't know Cafe <laughs> Bustello. I'm telling you, y'all need to get Cafe Bustello to sponsor our, to sponsor me for Vector Vest because as much as I talk about it, you guys are talking about it too. So, all right, all right. With that shameless plug in place. Let's uh, take a look at our next search, which takes the other approach that uh, I favor for looking for under the radar stocks, right? So this one, we're going to modify our usual hot stock picks search. So let's put that up if we can. So the hot stock picks search is in your unit search tool under cherry picking. And the modifications that I make to it Hold on, I'll just close this out. Okay. And you trying to find the hot stocks in a search or in the watch list? I sent uh, Joey an image. Oh. Oh, he wants the image. The image. Although okay. if it's still blurry, uh, maybe we won't use it, but you tell me. No, I think the blurriness went away. Okay. All right, it's up there for them. Okay, I can't see it, so I can't point to it, but ultimately what we did is I changed the price Can you put it down to less than ten dollars yeah. right that's in keeping with our low priced model here volume i changed to fifty thousand shares back to the same two billion market cap rt trending higher for two weeks okay so those are the changes that i made to the base search right all the other criteria are part of the base search and the operative ones Looking for a buy rating, right? So that means we have RT above one and we have some fundamental strength. We're looking for a price percent change of 1%. We're looking for price to have been trending higher for two weeks in a row. Looking for a trend in comfort index, right? So all of these other operative pieces are still in place. I've just now lowered the threshold to include some stocks that may have otherwise been filtered. So after running that search and reviewing the results i settled on gnk which is uh a dry shipper right so uh they're kind of coming back into the forefront part of the thematic idea here is that with expanding commerce as we get some covid uh i was gonna say relief but uh let's call it relief as economic activity increases we'll see some more uh, shipping around that activity. So in the news, uh, most recent story I saw for GNK is they bought two brand new Ultramax vessels for their fleet that'll be delivered in January. That doubles their fleet of Ultramax ships to six in the past six months. And of course the Ultramax ships are the most fuel efficient, technologically advanced newer ships. So currently, GNK is under favored or undervalued, priced at 1757, valued at 19. Good RV, well, favorable RV at 1.17. Uh, below average RS at 0.83, so not the safest knife in the in the shed. Earnings growth projected at 15%. They're in a nice upward price trend. So you've got projected earnings growth at 15%. We are currently positive with earnings. They're also, as a side note, uh, read in that same article that the purchase uh, of the new ships is as non-leveraged as they can make it. They're using cash on hand for the majority of the financing. But also I wanna tell you, earnings growth projected at 15% on, 
positive earnings is a good deal and sales growth. If I scroll over, which I didn't check on FRD, but you can as we scroll over. Sales growth negative, although improving. And so with the addition of more ships in the fleet, obviously they'll be able to carry more cargo and do more sales. So hopefully putting all of those pieces together in a positive way. So let's change over to the graph. And let's look at the six month window. And a couple things going on. First of all, again, price action, bottom left, upper right, yes, although we see this consolidation in the upper right hand corner. So price started out stripping the moving average, right? So it's it's advancing quickly. You see high RT values, typically unsustainable. It's getting overextended. And so what happens is instead of pulling back, it consolidates over time. So notice how the 40-day moving average has given us nice support throughout the time frame. And as that consolidation nears support again, we're ready to take off? Maybe. We have price action today pushing through that upper resistance line. Tomorrow is really the action day with confirmation of that uh, retest of, of resistance. All right, but certainly going in the nice way, nice hollow candle, strong price move today. RT elevated and accelerating into this most recent price action. You would expect to see in the consolidation that we would stop hitting new highs, right? So this flat RT behavior is expected but notice how we're putting in higher lows and higher highs as rt is accelerating into this most recent price move volume is maybe the most problematic in that it's been a little bit underwhelming here in the past couple of weeks today's volume is higher than the average which is good news and we see earnings per share trending higher remember we're on a positive basis on this one so that's all good news as well Right, so that is my pick for GNK. All right, Stan, tell me what you think about it. All right, well, I was going to comment um, earlier. I, I love Todd's analytical approach to the whole exercise, uh, the way you uh, sort of set out your your goals, your objectives, and the process. Uh, it, you know, there's. There's a reason why you're the manager of research, <laughs> and you've done it with JNK. I think again, just a terrific um, momentum play. I love the fact it's just broken out above the resistance area out of this sort of quiet channel here. Um, yeah, the 40-day moving average providing support, RT rising. I noticed. Um, I did a quick graph on on my own um, software and noticed the 40-day moving average of of RT is also just rising beautifully. And uh, so it's a, it's a really good looking looking stock. The, the fundamentals, I think the a lot of the shippers are just sort of getting back into um, business as usual a little bit. And so some of their fundamentals are maybe coming along a little bit more now. And um, J&K on the US side looks looks like one of the the leaders in terms of a really strong momentum play. Uh, if you look at the six month graph and how often it's been a buy rated stock, it's just about all the way along. So um, I think that's a really good pick. Um, I'm hot on the shippers. Uh, if any of you have been watching our YouTube, our other YouTube channel where we do the videos, one of the biggest videos I have going on that's got the most views is CTRM in the whole shipping space. Um, it's a very speculative play in that space, but uh, Stan is right. If commerce is opening up countries like China, and China is gonna play a big role in the shipping of goods because they got more people than people got people. China's got more people, and they are going to be the ones that spur up this whole commerce of getting goods to them. And all of these shipping companies that are taking advantage of getting building their fleets, CTRM is like almost tripled their fleet, not doubled, but tripled their fleet in a matter of the last um, um, six months. So um, GNK, I have a stock that's in this space. 
these are stocks to definitely keep your eyes on. And someone said that this was a, bit, a bull flag. Todd, back me up on this. If I am going to draw a line, I draw a horizontal line um, from this, what is it, this point, because this would be the flagpole. Is that not correct, Todd? Sorry, I was muted. So if that's your flagpole, then yeah, typically I'm looking for the flag to be descending, right? Two parallel lines descending would be my flag. Okay. So I don't see that as a flag myself, but uh, okay, I'll take it. But if that's the case, the potential rise would be from this level to this level. Is that correct? Somewhere along this yes. would be the flagpole? Yes, so you look for the extension, yeah. So this stock's got some good upside. I do like that. And also with both Todd and Stan said, this is serving as a beautiful level of support. And instead of falling, instead of falling, it consolidated and stayed above the 40 day um, or you know, 40 day. I like this breakout out of that channel. You need some confirmation. If you get some confirmation, this could be a good play. This could be a good play, but it's in a, it's in a hot industry. I think the last time I checked transportation ship, was number 48 out of 222. I think that was the last time. It's probably even better now. It's, it is a hot industry as commerce does open back up. All right. So I'm going to close out of that. And, oh, go ahead. What was you going to do? Okay, fine. Joey's bad at me. So, you know, <laughs> that's for me to Joey. All right. So am I okay to use it now? Do whatever you like. Oh, okay. He's, he, now I'm getting an attitude from Joey. You, you need to check your attitude at the door. Don't make, world. don't make me come across this table. All right. I love I Joey. Got Joey, the New York is coming out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna come out. <laughs> I'm gonna come out with the next two stocks. Um, once again, my name is Glenn Tompkins. See, Joey didn't even want to put my picture up there. He he got mad. He's got attitude going on. Uh, my name is Glenn Tompkins. I'm a senior instructor here at VectorVest. I've been here for 17 years. I got my hands in a lot of little stuff. So I do our jockey club in the morning. I see there's a lot of people here from our jockey club, which is our live day trading room, where we do day trades and swing trades live every morning from 9 a.m. to 10.30. Uh, I do Trending Thursday, which is a live stream, which we'll do tomorrow uh, as well here on this streaming channel at two o'clock. Invite your friends. Um, I'm part of Strategies of the Week and time, all that stuff. I got my hands in everything. So uh, it's my pleasure to be here. I love hosting these and I love the guests that we have. Um, Glenn is the man. Glenn. See, why does somebody why does somebody always trying to get me to run for 2024? You're going to be my oh, vice president. Yeah. Joey's going to be my vice president. And I think because of Todd's analytical mind, he's going to be my, my secretary of the treasury. Yeah, my treasury secretary. All right, so. Be careful what you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me talk about the two stocks that I have in here. Uh, I'm also with, I'm also with uh, the shipping. So uh, notice that out of my listing of four stocks, out of the listing of four stocks that we got here, Sorry, that's you gotta tell me what I can and cannot do. Okay. Out of the listing of the stocks that we have in here, they're sorted by our master indicator VST. So notice that the two shipping companies have the highest VST in here. Interesting, right? So I think that this industry as a whole is a good industry. Uh, I'm looking at Diana shipping. Uh, price at 501 with a value of 582. So a low dollar stock that is undervalued. Looking at our vector vest indicators, though, relative value, the stock's potential to outperform the uh, AAA corporate bond over the next one to three years, above the value of one on our vector vest scaling of zero to two. This means that technically, that this stock should outperform that AAA corporate bond by 35% over the next one to three years. It's a growth stock from that perspective. Now, for a stock that's got good upside potential, we're willing to give up a little risk. So the relative safety on that same scale between zero and two is below one. It's a little risky, it's unfavorable. But I'm willing to give up some risk to take on the big possibility of the stock going up in price, big upside potential. Indicator RT tells me if the stock's in an uptrend or not. Above the value of one, stock's in an uptrend. 
the higher above the value of 1, the stronger the uptrend is. So on that scaling between 0 and 2, DSX or Diana Shipping's at a value of 1.82, nice uptrend. VST at 1.43. Earnings is positive, and they grow their earnings at a clip of 24% a year. Let's go see from a sales perspective, sales uh, growth minus six. Same kind of scenario with GNK. This industry has been decimated. But if I look at it on the graph, uh, sales is probably getting better. It's just less worse than what it was. And I think that as this comes around, that number will turn around. So fundamentally, well, I've got what I call more of an aggressive play, relative value above one, relative safety below one. But I don't know how many people out there are really playing the shipping business just yet. And unless you're a watcher of our YouTube channel where I've been talking a lot about it. There's an index called the BDI. The dry bulking industry uh, looks at the percentages or the change in the amount of money is charged for these shippings. That number is getting higher. That means demand is increasing on these ships to do their business. And DSX, GNK, CTRM, all buying ships to prepare for this. And you know, it's all about what you what you feel. Uh, somebody says, "Don't leave my day job." Did I sing? I didn't <laughs> sing yet, did I? So why did somebody? That was very Ravi. I didn't sing or nothing. All right. So anyway, let's go look at the graph. View the stock graph. Bring it up. Put it on a. I'll put on a three month graph. Three month graph. Look at that. Bottom left, top right. Same 40-day moving average, serving as a beautiful level of support. Look at that move up. And GNK for Todd did a lot more of a sideways move than DSX did, even though it consolidated here with two levels of support, one here. Uh, at 377 and one here at 360. 360 was the low point. And look at that run up, staying above the 40 day. Nice open candle today. Earnings per share is negative, but less negative. It is growing higher. Volume, eh, it, it's okay. Volume is not blowing the doors off the market. It's okay. RT is rising. Stocks price is rising. When to get in? I like that it's up, you know, on the up days, it's got a lot of, well, not all of the up days have no wick, but no wick today. We're getting some pickup in people buying into this stock. Personally, I'd like to see it go above the high by five cents. So about 524 would probably be my stop price to go in. That helps to ensure that I'm buying into the stock as it's rising. But you can't fight the tape. That stock is definitely going up. And that's a beautiful thing. Earnings is rising. RT, da 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 yada, 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 yada. Who is that coming from? That came from what? Um, that was a Seinfeld. Seinfeld. That was Seinfeld. <laughs> yada, yada. All right. So I like it. Bottom left, top right. Look at for the majority of the three months, this stock has been a buy. For the majority of the three months, this stock has been a buy. So I like it. All right. This time I'll start with you, Todd. What do you got to say? Yeah, I like oh, it. that it's your nice buddy pick. Glenn is awesome. You are awesome, and this is also not a bad pick. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, slap on the 20-day for me as well. I got a 20-day EMA. There you go. Okay, that'll work. Well, I'll put them on together. Oh. So you have a 40 EMA? Yeah. You do those together. All right, so paralleling each other nicely, still slightly separating, but really kind of stable price trend established because they're paralleling each other. So still nicely in trend. Nice support from both those moving averages in the current trend. And here I'm going to get fancy on you. Uh-oh. Uh, open a new graph, add a new graph. Type DSX in there. You still have access. You do now. All right, so we'll type DSX in here. Yeah. I just don't want to blow up your other graph. I'm going to change this graph to the industry graph. Ah, I like that. I like so same that layout. chart, and I cannot lie. Well, particularly when it comes up. Come on, baby. Look at that industry, baby. Actually, maybe I'll even uh, come into something a little tighter. What I notice is, right, so here's the channeling price action of the industry. My pick got caught up in that channel. Ah, that's Yours true. did too, but yours broke out before mine. Right? So actually outperforming a little bit 
because in that same time frame, here's your little consolidation, and now you're back to chug a lug. There's there you a go. Shipping joke in there somewhere. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, <laughs> I like it. Nice pick. Stan. Yeah, I I like it a lot as well. It's uh, it, I love that upward channel that it's that it's in, especially coming out of that that quiet zone um, earlier. Um, it really has broken out beautifully. It's held the buy rating uh, all the way through on these three months. It's in the right industry group and. Uh, just kind of interesting. I just I just switched over to a performance graph very quickly, and both DSX and GNK have outperformed the industry. So they are the the leaders, I think, in the in the industry and and performing quite well. Um, Do GNK, me a favor, Stan. Look at your graph and add another one. Add CTRM. On, on your graph. Okay. Yeah, yep, just, I will indeed. And that's just you looking at it. And and, okay. and Todd added it here. There you go. CTRM, okay. DSX. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, definitely that, outperform. Your stocks are outperforming. And uh, G&K has been a little bit stronger recently, but they're both um, really performing extremely well. So I like them both. I think again, they're they're in the right industry for the for the time, and um, you should see a continued momentum play with with your stock. So pretty darn good pick, Glenn. Wow, you're, look you're at not those. just you're not just a pretty face. You you really do pick some great stocks. Well, that's it's the software. We we're, we're just people, but it's and yeah, Todd, Todd I, did a good little job right there for all three of those, and and I want everybody to know that CTRM. Definitely is a super speculative play. Um, and if you look at it, it is underperforming the industry, but the two picks that Todd and I picked out for you are outperforming the industry. All right, so when I, when I tell you that CTRM is a speculative play, I ain't just whistling Dixie. But the two picks <laughs> that we brought to the table today, really, so, and um, SBLK is another good pick in that in that spot, John. That really is... There's in TK, there, there's a the SBLK put in TNK, uh, what is it? TK should yeah, be TK shipping. Yeah, strong. All one. of the, these, if you're not, if nothing else, you're learning about a hot industry. Even though it was only two stocks that we were talking about, you're learning about a hot industry today uh, that's kicking butt and taking names overall. <laughs> so, um, all of these, good, good play there, John. I like that. Uh, Zim Zim is not in that space, is it? Todd, I don't think so. I don't I don't know if Zim is or not, but I'm not. Don't put that up unless I know. I don't know if Zim is in that spot or not. All right. So I like that little bit of extra analysis in the picks that that uh, Todd and I picked for shipping. I think that was a good pick. Uh, oh, of course I thought mine was a good pick, and Todd <laughs> Todd was, Todd was pretty okay too. <laughs> yeah, they look great. <laughs> all right, let me get into my I, second I, I stock. I see people are hitting the like button, so it's uh, all yeah, good. He, he, uh, how many likes we got, Joey? All right, let's keep those likes going as much as we possibly can. All right, now the second stock that I picked, notice that it's the worst VST in the group of four, but it's nicely up today. And this, to me, was the epitome, the, the epitome. The, the, ep, the epitome of under the radar. It's in the clean energy space, clean spark, trading at $19 with a value of 13. That whole clean energy space, especially for EVs, was rocking and rolling for a minute, and then it died off, all right? <laughs> but this is in the clean energy space. This company sets up um, the, the grid for clean energy um, all in and of itself, all right? And I, I wanted to do a couple of things. One, right-click. I wanted to view the full stock analysis report because on that full stock analysis report, there's clean, sp uh, there's clean spark, all right? And you notice that, well, why is Glenn picking clean spark? 
Well, it's in an industry that's starting to rise now. The stock in itself is starting to rise as well. All right. Uh, advanced energy software and control technology that enables plug and play enterprise solutions to modern energy challenges. So we know that in the clean space, more and more people are going after clean energy. It was rocking and rolling in the EV space, stocks like REGI and in solar power and water power, all of those things that were rocking, pull back a little bit. I think that there's going to be more emphasis on these stocks starting to move again. All right. So. Uh, I looked at the relative value. The stock's got good upside potential. Again, you're going to give up some safety out of this stock. Uh, it's in an uptrend, but not definitely not as fast as the other three. But it's in an uptrend. I do like the positive earnings. And look at the earnings growth rate of the four. This has got the highest earnings growth rate. All right. And last but not least, if I go over, look at this where I get there. Where is it? Where is it? sales growth there it is look at that sales growth folks that means they're getting contracts that means they're getting contracts for the business sales growth 122 percent that's huge that's that's enough to, to help to to bolster that stock bigly can i use my mouse okay that's enough to and so now let's go look at the uh the equity curve and so why did I pick this? All right, so now let's come back to my three-month graph. Why did I pick this? So clean energy was the rave a while ago. Look at that. Back in the end of 2020, going into 2021, clean energy was the rave. Then it died off. Well, if clean energy was the rave, it got to the point of $42, Back here in January of this year, pull back, pull back, pull back. If you draw a trend line, let's go to the three month. If you draw a trend line right now from that high connecting the other highs, a couple of things happen. One, the stock's price broke through the downtrend. Two, um, the stock recently went from a sell to a hold. Three, the stock broke through a level of resistance sitting at a value of $17.56. Now, looking at both the 20 and the 40 day moving average, excuse me, let's go take that off. It's above both, All right? Recently it was, it was uh, below, uh, above the 20 day, but recently it got above the 40 day. The stock is gaining momentum. RT just turned from below one to above one. I like this as an early play prior to this energy uh, space picking up. Um, so this is a little different than some of the other stocks that we've looked at today, but I like it as a rebound coming off a solid level of support Moving up, I'm going to put on two other moving averages, take off the 20 and the 40. I'm going to look at this from a trade perspective. The three and the eight exponential moving average. Uh, the three just recently went above the eight on 526 of 2020. Even on the pullback, the three stayed above the eight and the stock's price is moving up. So there's a lot of things to like about this stock. Earnings per share is positive. The earnings growth rate is at 31%. Um, I think that this fits the under the radar pattern to get in early enough, and I like it. Now, I see the wick today that there's a little bit of selling pressure, but the wick is still smaller than the body, so the bulls overall still have the play. I've got a level of resistance sitting at 23.13. If I were to get into it now, all right, I've got a profit target sitting there. I got another level of resistance at 24, and on the three month graph, I've got a profit target of about 31. That's a nice little move on this stock uh, to make some money. So that's my second pick. We'll start with, <coughs> um, who did it first, this the first time? It was, it was you, Todd? Yes. Okay, so go ahead. Oh, I thought you were going to give it to Stan. I thought uh, we were, we were <laughs> listen, fair I, here or something. I, I, forget, I, I forget everything from time to time. It takes me a long, I got to go, I think I'm going to the, to Walgreens to go get some Prevagen. I've seen the commercials for it. I think I need it. <laughs> so what strikes me on this is really it's the different definition of under the radar, right? So we saw the uh, market rotation out of tech into safety, risk off, right? So in that rotation, of course, tech broadly, including clean energy, suffered a lot of profit taking. And so in that 
vein, if we're turning the corner and back into some kind of reflation, then this could be a nice entry. In the short term, I'm still in trader mode here, and your points are well taken, right? In terms of turning up, has the downtrend ended? Well, we haven't put in the lower low yet, unless you want to call this the lower or higher low. But we have had the crossover of the moving averages. We're above resistance, but we broke above that before. Our T has crossed to the upside. I've got some headroom now to take a position and at least pocket some gains up to that resistance level and then play it as I get close, right, on a trade basis. Once I can establish a nice, a stronger pivot, and it's it's subjective, I realize whether or not you call that a pivot as being the higher low. If you do, then you're even more bullish, I think, on this move. But in any event, on a trade basis, I still still have enough headroom here to make that an effective trade. And if I can break through this resistance level on a new uh, resumption of trend, then so much the better, right? I can either add to the position or just, uh, you know, go have dinner. And before you start, before you start, Stan, someone says, are we concerned about lawsuit? Is there news about lawsuit? And if that's the case, I'm probably going to do a video on this. I'm going to take a deeper look into Clean Spark, uh, and I may actually do a YouTube video on our other channel because I'm interested in like I like the rebound. But if there's some news behind it that I need to check into, I might do a video for you guys. I can't do it next week. You know why? Because I'm going on a missions trip to Guatemala, so I won't be here next week. But I will check into that if there is some lawsuit included in this stock, um, and I may do a video on it. And thank you for that information, if, if that is the case. All right, Stan. Well, I think this is the ultimate rubber, ba rubber band type of pick where it certainly has um, fallen to levels where it becomes more attractive. And um, it is it is responding to that. It looks like buyers are stepping in, and uh, I, I do like the space that it's in in the clean energy space. Um, I noticed that on a three month and a six month performance graph, CLSK is really pulling away from um, you know the um, uh, the, the mutual funds, the the indices, uh, uh, the TAN, the ICLN. It's really pulling away as a leader in this space just over the last three to three to six months. So um, maybe the news about the lawsuit hasn't gone out yet, or maybe people think they're going to win. I don't know. I haven't heard that news about a, a lawsuit, but it does remind us that we should always check the news. Absolutely. Uh, before that, we do our final uh, That's purchase. why I want to do overall, a little bit of di diving on yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's always important. But overall, what really struck stuck out to me, and you highlighted it, was that... Uh, sales growth rate 122 percent annualized uh, sales growth is really remarkable and uh, it really you know the earnings and sales are going to drive that stock price so it's you know there's it's it's a good momentum play right now but i think you want to keep it on your your watch list and and maybe just add shares on on those little dips and and take advantage of it because it's got some short-term upside and some long-term upside as well all right, so I'm going to close out of this, and I need to go find the yeah, other. I, I need stands. All right, so Joey is going to bring up uh, the VV Canada. There you go. Oh, and Stan, before you come on, tell all these wonderful people who you are and then you're going to go into your stocks. <laughs> All right, Glenn. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm the consultant for VectorVest Canada. I live in Lethbridge, Alberta, so I'm broadcasting from my home office. Those aren't actually the Rocky Mountains in behind me there on the on the screen, but truly we live just an hour and a half uh, to, uh, to the east of the Rocky Mountains and uh, just an hour from the Montana border. And I've been a subscriber to VectorVest since 2003. Uh, in Lethbridge, I was an administrator with the University of Lethbridge and then moved over to healthcare administration when we opened up a brand new uh, regional hospital here for Southern Alberta. So I, I've been in, in administration, but 
um, took re early retirement based on you know some good some good decisions I guess and um, didn't do much for three years and then did really well in a national post contest and getting lots of help from the support team at VectorVest and um, sort of encouragement to maybe get involved and I've been teaching uh, or instructing in Canada now since about 2000, late 2010, early 2011. So time has really um, flown by. I absolutely love it. And I know there's a lot of folks that were on my Q&A on uh, Tuesday or yesterday that said they would be here. And I want to thank all the Canadian subscribers for for coming out. Uh, really appreciate that support. Um, if I make a, a pick that you might like, I hope you'll click the like button and and at the end of it, I'm going to count them all up and see if I outliked Todd and, and Glenn. We'll see. <laughs> but anyway, these are my three picks up on the screen. Um, I was going to start maybe, Glenn, with a PowerPoint. Um, it's not necessary particularly, but I think it might make things go a little bit faster if that's okay. And um, now let's see, do I have control here? Yes, I do. My goodness, there we go. So Glenn showed you the stock analysis report on the last selection. And I absolutely think this is a necessity when, you know, before you make your final choice, just go to the full stock analysis report. You right click on any stock and it comes up in a new menu. So you get the basic business description of the company and so my first pick is the well health technologies it's kind of a, a coronavirus play they've they've got some testing technology for that aspect of it um, and of course they're involved in the electronic health record and having served in admin at the uh, chinook regional hospital in lethbridge that was something that we've been you know had been implementing over the years since uh, since I was there and it's just so important you can walk into any emergency uh, in Alberta or Western Canada and they know exactly your allergies you know your previous operations and just everything on your medical record so they're kind of a kind of a leader in that electronic medical medical record field so I like that I like the stock graph it's come from a base you can see it here and now it's rising from there the industry, it's also rising and it's got Constellation software in there and, or sorry, not Constellation software. It's got some fairly strong uh, healthcare uh, industries in there and yet it's the top, uh, top stock in that group. So it owns primary healthcare facilities in Canada, the US, always good to do a little extra research. It is growing by acquisition. Uh, they had record revenue growth just recently with their Q1 report. 150% year-over-year growth, and you can kind of see that when we get to the chart in VectorVest because the forecasted earnings per share in VectorVest is rising as well. And then there have been some analyst upgrades, and uh, you know that $10 price is kind of like a magnet, and I can see Well Health uh, getting there in the short term. So I kind of like the stock a lot. I'm going to show you on the graph uh, just a, just a fairly simple setup, but here is sort of that support line going all the way across on the bottom here. We've come back down to it again just recently, and now we've broken out to the upside. And I love these new buy ratings. If you can buy a stock that's either a new buy or has received a, bu a buy rating recently, that's a, a little safer time to uh, to come in or you're buying on a pullback when it's a, a buy rated stock and you get a pullback. But this is kind of ideal where we've just got the new buy rating. Now there is overhead resistance. You can see that here. Um, but I think with what's happening in healthcare and um, the acquisitions that they've made recently, well health could, could break through that resistance and go even higher uh, than the $10 price point, which would be a pretty healthy increase on its own. So this is the 40, uh, day moving average, sort of that Midas touch um, graph setup with a 40 day moving average of RT. The RT itself is also rising, but I love the fact that it's kind of bottomed out here and starting to rise. We've got some big volume spikes. We've got on balance volume strong for the, the entire year. And there's that forecasted earnings growth rising all the way to the right edge. So I like that stock. Uh, let's go back to the 
Well, let, let me review the other two picks quickly, if I may, uh, just conscious of time here, and then I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of look at all the charts. So the other one that I was looking at was Converge Technology, and I do own this stock, so just full disclosure there, I do own this and have owned it for a while. Um, it, um, it's kind of a leader in cybersecurity, the, the cloud space here in Canada. Uh, it's interesting. It's actually higher rated by value safety timing in VectorVest than stalwarts such as Constellation Software and some of the other big names. So it is under the radar, meets that criteria, uh, just as well health is still under the radar, even though it's had some pretty big moves recently. But CTS is truly under the radar, but making some pretty strong acquisitions. You can see on the chart, it's been rising quite strongly. Uh, the industry consolidating here a little bit, but there's it's a fairly large industry group, and there's some big names in there like Constellation uh, that are really starting to, to roll again and ramp up. So I like that one. A lot of awards by this company. You can see it here, uh, 39th rank on um, solution, uh, solution providers list. So uh, it's really, really strong that way. And it also has had its price target increase and it's kind of like a magnet, these even these even numbers. And so I, I wouldn't be surprised to see it get to $10 very quickly. And you can see um, down below, I've got the relative value, the upside potential, absolutely powerful at 1.47. And look at that earnings growth rate, 37% uh, annualized. So a lot of good things about this stock. When we look at the graph, you can see it's uh, got a support floor here that it's uh, broken above after a, a, this nice little quiet period, nice little breakout here, the, the pullback to retest the support area. And now we're on our way, another consolidation. Uh, this would this would be an, an EMA squeeze stock if you were setting up that chart layout. I've got the 40-day moving average of RT. I love the fact that it pulled back on the RT and now it's rising again. The RT itself is rising. Um, just a big volume spike here and here. Um, not showing up quite as strong, but those are pretty good volume spikes and the on balance volume and the earnings per share. So pretty strong looking uh, stock here as well. And then my last one, again, I own this stock, so full disclosure there, but uh, Bird Construction, it's, um, it constructs large industrial buildings and there's just not much competition in that space in Canada. Uh, we had a very major structure built in the, the University of Lethbridge just recently. Uh, the Science uh, Centre opened up and uh, Bird's fingerprints with its uh, uh, affiliated companies was all over it. And so we're starting to see that with infrastructure starting to really uh, ramp up here in Canada. And uh, you can see the, port, the Q1 construction revenue increased 38% year over year. And uh, it does pay a dividend and it pays it monthly as well. And it's a healthy 4%. So that's not a bad starting point. Um, and here's the graph, the individual stock graph where it's starting to ramp up again after a, a fairly significant pullback even in the last three months. And the industry also starting to uh, find a support level and break up from there. So the RV, again, very attractive. Uh, the up, that's the upside potential longer term. And, um, but you can see the CI is showing 1.63. So quite a resilient stock overall. You can see that on one year or three month, and you'll see it on the one year graph in a minute. Sales growth is strong. Earnings annual growth rate is strong. So I like that stock an awful lot. So um, let's see, did I put a graph on there and I did actually. So um, here is the one year daily rising from bottom left to top right for earnings. We've just come through a bit of a quiet period here, finding that support area, pulling back a little bit and uh, now a new buy or fairly recent new buy. Um, that, that's what I love to see. And I like to see also, you'll notice on the 40 day moving average of RT, during this quiet period, we did pull back on the RT, consolidated, and then really ramped up here, matching the buy rating really strong. And I think we're in that kind of a period right now 
So I'm expecting that we'll see at least a, a momentum play from here, maybe up to that $10 or higher. And then what I suggest with all three stocks really from there is when you get these little pullbacks, sometimes they're not so little, <laughs> they can be quite large too. But when you get these kind of consolidation or compression areas, and then you see the RT on its own and the 40 moving average of RT rising like this, those are chances to either take a new position or add to your, your shares and really grow a position in uh, in a good quality company that doesn't have a lot of uh, competition in this space. So let's uh, go back to the um, software, Joey, if we can. So here's what it looks like here. So uh, for example, very easy to see the other stocks in the uh, industry group. Uh, let's have a look at Converge. You can just right click if that'll take me to, there's the full stock analysis report that I showed on the slides. And there's the view stocks in the industry group. You'll have to pull that over to my screen for me. But always a good idea to check out the industry. You can do an industry graph. Um, you can certainly do a, a, a sector graph, which is my preferred approach here in Canada, but this is a fairly robust industry, 77 companies in this uh, space, and look who's right at the top, Converge, having made some recent acquisitions. The one thing they do a lot of that you need to be aware of is they do these bought deals to add cash so they can do more acquisitions and you'll get those temporary price declines typically with a bought deal. Uh, they've just done another one recently, but just just look at the you know how it's performing compared to the competition. I love that in VectorVest. We can rank and sort by any of these columns, and by VST we are right at the top. And so from there uh, we'll go back uh, out of here, and I can just graph the top three, which that's all we have. And so there's what it looks like on a graph with earnings per share rising. Uh, this is now a one-year graph again, and uh, again, I love these little consolidation areas, quiet areas, compression areas, whatever you want to call them, and then the breakout, and we're just rising beautifully above the 40-day recent new buy, which is where I entered into this position, and it's moving up nicely. And let's see, can I move over to the next one? There we go. So there's uh, bird construction. Nice little compression area here, quiet area, the breakout, really good rally, the pullback, you can see it on the 40 more moving average of RT, and now starting to ramp up with these new buy ratings. And that's just a simple search in VectorVest. It's a new buy search, uh, just so you don't miss any of those opportunities. You still need to look at the stock, check the industry and sector, check the news, but a new buy, you can see how effective they are uh, in ramping up on that stock. And there's Well Health. Uh, for all the reasons I've mentioned, it's really become a leader in that field. There's a lot of good choices in in the health healthcare space, extended care and seniors health uh, companies in Canada. But this is one that is really a leader in the technology side of, of the um, health delivery uh, with their primary care. Uh, centers, their electronic health records, their cloud technology. So I like it a lot. You can see it is a little bit more volatile than the other ones. We've got some sell ratings up at the top here. Those are times when you want to exercise caution. You can even get out of the space, out of the stock, and then come back in on these new buy ratings and you're off to the races. And I'll just quickly, lastly, oh, yep, go ahead, Glenn. Um, someone says, go back to that graph, go back, you um, know, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, someone says you have on balance volume on the graph. What does it mean? Oh, okay. So this is the difference between uh, bullish volume or, or positive volume and negative volume calculated on a daily basis. And so when there's more sort of up days on price and volume, you start to see the on balance volume rising like this. And it's a really strong indicator. Um, 
I, I just like to see it, you know, rising and, and holding uh, really well above the uh, the oscillator level here. So uh, that's a, that's all it is. And it's one of the uh, tech, technical analysis tools that we have. And, um, you know, the nice part is you can toggle it on and off. And uh, that's what I've done here is just toggle it on for a quick analysis of, of sort of that volume um, spikes. And let it see what else. Uh, oh, I, I was just going to quickly show you then, and I'll certainly try to answer any questions, Glenn, if they do come up. And I'm, I'm sure uh, Todd and yourself, you'll have some comments for me to try and respond to. Uh, um, but um, just, uh, oh, I was just going to quickly go to Unisearch. Is this is something, uh, even for experienced subscribers, just to know that it's I'm here. It's under trends, new stuff, and it's this new buy rated stocks. And uh, you can run it on the current day. You can go back, like on the weekend, what I like to do is just change my date back to each day of the week, look at all the new buys, put them in a watch list, and then you can graph them and look for the leaders coming out of that list. Not all of them are going to just keep that new buy and and keep going. So you want to do some cherry picking, look at that support and resistance, look at the industry and go from there. So those are my three picks. I think they're great. I own two of them uh, and have for a while, but I think they're all really good. Is there anything the software doesn't do? The software will make your bed for you in the morning, Mark. I, you just don't, you, I just haven't taught you how to do it yet. On YouTube, I'm gonna. My wait favorite I hit my feature 20th is cooking year. bacon. Huh? My favorite feature is cooking bacon. Oh yeah, <laughs> it, it does do that too. I'm first, not gonna show you how to morning. how to do that yet, Mark, until I hit 20 years. Then I'll show you how the software can help you cook bacon. How about that. All right, um, Stan, can we take a look at your stocks? I have control. Viewers, oh, yeah, I'm gonna you I'm bet. gonna bring them up. Absolutely. And I'm gonna let Todd start. Todd, you don't have control anymore. It's just me and Stan. So you you got to tell me what you want to do. I was going to make a wife joke, but I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start with CTS. As okay. you have it up on the graph there, add uh, support resistance for me. And guess what, folks? Our software will automatically draw support and resistance for you on the graph. Automatically. Okay. Go ahead, Todd. So Stan made the point here where we have, we had the breakout out of resistance, right? We came back for the retest, right? So that was important breaking out of that channel, getting price is getting a little overextended at this point, but Stan talked about uh, the EMA squeeze portion of that con that convergence. We talked a little bit earlier about flags and pennants. I see a little pennant on that. And so that would connotate a, an extension of the flagpole. And uh, no, let me help you out. So that high that's uh, right there by your mouse, go descending trend line from there across the tops. Descending? Descending, because it's a pennant. You got it. There you go. And then a little uptrend across the lows. Nope, up, 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 up. To that filled green candle, roughly. Field left, go left. There you go, right there. Oh, yeah. So if you can connect those lows, you'll get there eventually. But basically, I get the, <laughs> the, the flagpole coming into that. I don't like you right, right now, Todd. As the extension. <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful flag now. And that, and that would be the flagpole. another buck and a half, right, from there the breakout. Go. So nice extension of price. They might have a little bit of consolidation or a little uh, stumbling here as volume looks a little bit light at this point but the fundamentals are there the price acceleration is there you've got the breakouts in place so today's doji well okay that's fine just look for more evidence of continuation uh, on the trade you've got your back your buy rating so all good from there just adding some nuance i like to trade yeah. bottom left top right it had been as i'm starting to use the words now quiet i like that you and steve you and uh, todd both said that quiet area but look at that since then in just using that 40-day moving average nicely above it never came back below even when it moved sideways both times 
solid. Um, today's that little bit of a doji cross, both the wick or as J uh, Jesse would say, hair and tail, but um, not not a lot of movement today. Where's why can't I get that to go away? Oh, never mind. All right, so I totally hear you on that, but I like the unbalanced volume. I like the dip on RT, still above one and rising. I like to I like to pick. Awesome. All right. Let's yeah, go. And, and but I just Glenn, if I just may, uh, Todd made a very good point um, that we talk about quite a bit in our uh, Q and A's on Tuesday, and that is when we see price extended too far away from that 40-day moving average. Quite often, you will get a little pullback um, closer to the 40-day, and might create a more ideal uh, buying opportunity. Uh, I, I think that this one I've seen that in the past on Converge where it it has pulled back on those 40 day if you go a little further out maybe the year graph or six months even I think you'll see it there's one right there pulls back hits the support area of that 40 day and then takes off from there so um, you know I'm not saying it's not okay to go in and buy it right now I think uh, that uh, flag pole was a the bull flag was a good setup and uh, we're not too far extended from that so and I do love the fact the 40 day moving average is really just ramping up now and uh, quite often it takes a while to get going but once it's going uh, the, the price and that 40 day moving average keeps going for quite a while it's like a rocket it takes a while to, to thrust to the upside and and takes a while to come back down as well so thank you for their comments before we go on to the next stock to analyze, don't forget to type mug in the room. We're going to give it away in a matter of moments. And real quick as well, do not forget to subscribe to our other YouTube channel as well. So those two things, if you want a mug, we're going to give it away in about, in about a minute. Type mug in the room to be um, put in for the drawing for the mug. And don't forget, if you like the content here, to subscribe to our original YouTube channel. All right, let's go to the next stock, which is BDT. Todd? All right, so the first thing that impresses me just right off the bat is the support of the 40-day. Right, throughout that time frame, it has done a fantastic job of support. This pullback, this most recent pullback, coming back into that zone, right? So. The market resolved the overextension, if you will. Two pieces of, well, first piece of concern is I also noticed the double top. You've got some pretty strong resistance level at that high. So I might be a little gingerly, step a little gingerly till I get there. I'm about 9.50 now, so I have about 10 bucks as headroom. So I might be careful as I approach that, but then again, I still have 50 cents laying there on the table, right? <laughs> so. The good news is I've got fundamentals driving this thing and supporting it through time. So I like that piece. Let's see if we can't uh, uh -huh. get a little more support from that. And again, it's in that, you know, that pullback. Look at look at volume again, right? It goes quiet as the price is pulling back. Let's see, particularly if we can get a, a little pump with that uh, volume as we get the price appreciation. That'll be my signals to go. In the meantime, I've got a trend line down the highs. That'll give me a nice little trend line break as a signal that I should be paying attention. Oh, I can draw that. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about, Todd? Sure. <laughs> Whether that was right or not. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was, close. <laughs> was that not right, Todd? I might go to the high. There you go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, if you're I, if you if you're not in the position, as Todd says, it'd be really good to wait for price to get above that trend line, at, uh, at the least. But yeah, there's your asymmetrical triangle look setting at up that. beautifully. I'm getting some good learning here. There you go. <clears throat> I like to trade. I do see that consolidation. If Patrick were here, Patrick would be. He's the wedgeinator. There's the wedge. A little bit of a wedge. Consolidation pattern. Let's see if it can break out above on um, good volume. Earnings per share looks good. Uh, I'm with it. And I got that's on a three month graph. There's a six month graph, bottom left, top right. There's a one year graph, bottom left, top right. 
uh, more buys than anything across the one-year time period. So I, I do like that pick. And I do see the consolidation even with the 40-day moving average in there all at the same time. I like it. I like that stock, and I cannot lie. Maybe I want to go out and buy. All right, anyway, that's my, that was my rhythmic chanting time. It is putting in higher lows to that whole time frame as well. So. Yeah, it, it, it is, all the way across. Devin, oh, Devin D has won the giveaway. Devin, tell me you're here, because if you're not, you don't get it. Devin, <laughs> type in the room that you're here, please. Uh, unless, now, are, are your fingers... Are your fingers tongue-tied? Hopefully. <laughs> nope, that's Drew. Devin, are you here? Because De if you're not here, I got to roll again and get another winner. Um, yeah, in a minute, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the next stock. All right, I'm looking for Devin to, to show up. If not, I'm going to roll again. All right, next one. Well, this is another one of the under-the-radar type of scenarios. Uh, stocks price pulled back, found a nice level of support. I right, found a nice level of support. Now, recently coming off that little bit of hammer, hey, if I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. <laughs> I got a little bit of hammer right there. Stock's price moving up now above uh, the 40-day moving average, going higher, going higher. Uh, down day to day, that's all right. That's all right. One day doesn't make a trend. Down day to day, let's go see what happens. But I like the breakout coming off of that reversal pattern right there. Earnings is higher than it was this time ago last year. RT is running up. Um, I'd like also for RT to be up before I pull the trigger on the trade. All right. So, all right. Um, before either one of you, um, before uh, Todd, or, before you say anything, Todd, my next winner, Alex Green, has won the giveaway. If Alex ain't here, listen, I'm not giving away this mug if y'all ain't going to be here. Alex, type in the room, <laughs> all right, because if not, I'm going to pick somebody who's typing in this room, all right? If Alex doesn't show up, oh, you already rolled again, all right, Rodney G. Allen, are you here? Rodney G. Allen. <sighs> Sigh. Todd, analyze the stock. I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm finna do it. All right, don't type no, don't roll no more. I got it. All right, Todd, analyze be, the stock. I said you might be a little distracted. Oh, uh, no, nah, I'm, I'm yeah, nah. Okay, zoom out to a year. And snap a horizontal line under that, under those lows. He just gave you control. Or I can do that. <laughs> All right, look at that monster support level going on under that right so i can't count the touches right so huge support level there which gives us a nice floor to the price pattern right because ultimately yes we're in downtrend lower highs lower lows but as i zoom back in and i put on a manual trend line here actually before i do that let, let me show you this if i backed out that price break and you looked at this chart, you'd say, well, that stock's in a downtrend, right? Lower highs, lower lows. It seems to come back up to the 40 for the test, and then it pulls back. And now I can easily put on my freehand line, if I can get it to draw, right across those highs. So there's my trend line. I'm looking for that trend line break as one of the first indications, right, that the price action has changed. And in particular, if I take out the prior swing high. Well, there also happens to be a resistance level that VectorVest has picked up at that price level. And so now as I click forward and take back those two days, it says, Yowzer, not only did I get to the next resistance level, I have the trend line break, gapping price action, the trend line or the, the gapping day goes right back up to that resistance line. Well, is that a surprise, right? So let's pause there. And what happens on the next break? Right, go up to the next level. So we're climbing the ladder back out of this thing. And you know, when stocks have pulled back like this, there's all these resistance levels that you're just gonna have to get used to being used to, right? You, you can't wait, well you can, but if you wait for this thing to be clear of all resistance and take out the prior high, you could be there for a while and you're gonna leave a lot of money on the table. So is there a way that you can come back into a position manage your risk and play these levels, 
right? As it accelerates, I'm in. As I approach a resistance level, I pause. When I break through, I'm back in, right? To rebuild a position, you've got a couple things going on. You've got the trend line break. You've got RT crossed, actual RT. Is it on here somewhere? There it is. RT itself went above one, even though the moving average hasn't gotten there yet, but we certainly have been above the moving average since we started this uptrend. We got the crossover here today. We got the buy rating because we're back above. We've got solid fundamentals. You're doing it on better volumes, right? So the, yeah, you're early, but so what? Can you put together a scenario where that's tradable for you and you can take advantage of opportunities? Part of that for me in, in coaching folks is define abnormal, ab define failure of the price pattern. And at that point, that's where you put your stop and that's how you size the position. So let's say you want to put it at that really solid floor that we sell way back down at, uh, what is it, 650 or so. All right, I'll take fewer shares because I got more exposure, but now I can relax and let this thing develop over time. And, you know, as I can move my stop higher, I can put on more shares and, and put more risk on the table. All right. right, that's my take. And that's the Todd. Todd is so freaking an, super analytical about everything. <laughs> he he really really is, and sometimes he analytics himself into overthinking stocks. But for the most part, when I have questions about anything, I like to go over to him to get his take until I don't want to hear it anymore. But for the most part, he he does. So he does a great job, and that's why he's the manager of research. He does a great job on analyzing, and, and, and from a coaching perspective, telling you, just like he says, how do you know when price breaks down? It gives you the rules of what to look for and all of that kind of thing. So well done, Glenn, Todd. I could, Glenn, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, just before Todd gives up the controls, if you go out to a, to a longer period, a five-year, five for example, just want to show you the potential of, of this stock. Um, it is under the radar again uh, right at the moment, so it certainly meets our criteria. But it has, once it gets momentum building, and you can see it in the 40 moving average of RT and the RT itself, it, it does have a lot of potential to the upside. But I love the way Todd has framed it again with, you know, the upper trend line, the breakout, and the new buy. Wonderful. All right. Hopefully Real, we got a like or two in there. I, 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 I think you picked out some good stocks for the Canadian folks to look at. Um, and I, I'm glad that we had an opportunity to put on another version of VectorVest 7 for our hot stock panel. And I think I want to invite you. I want you to come back more. And Todd, you're going to sit out more. I want Todd, I want Stan to be here more than you. So, <laughs> I'm just, Oops. but but I you know, as offended. I say that, Todd is one of my three best friends. I told him that today. He's he's one of my three best friends. So it's not that I dislike Todd. I love and that's Todd. That's why I hurt all the more, Glenn. <laughs> you guys, you guys make a good team. Buddy. Don't forget about it. <laughs> you guys make a good team. Uh, I, we've we've worked a lot together out on the road too. All right. Just real quick, Grace, Grace Giovanni. I like that name. I looked at it. I said, Joey, I want Grace Giovanni to win uh, the cup. And Grace, you're here. I need you to make sure that you send your info. You need to send an email to connect at vectorvest.com. Connect at vectorvest.com. Send us your information. I'm going to send you this slightly drink out of mug by me. See that? And I, it's all right. I drank out of it just once, and I'm going to send you this mug. So there you go. <laughs> um, no, we're going we're gonna to send you a brand new mug, Grace. Thank you guys for showing up today. Um, big thank you again to Stan. Big thank you to Todd. Todd's got a lot going on on his plate every day, and I'm glad he took some time to be here today for our, our hot stock panel. So we'll have another one next month in July sometime. We, it's going to be... It's going to be the biggest, the most bigliest stocks to buy ever, July. Yeah, I like that. The most bigliest stocks to buy in July. I think that's going to be the hot stock panel. And, and Todd, I want you to be here for that. I do want you to be here for that. Bigliest. And you have to use the word bigliest. 
about firecracker. No, not firecracker. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're getting ready to sign off. I think that you guys had an opportunity to pick up on between the Canadian market and the U.S. market some good picks for you to consider. Um, just for, and I'm, I'm like Stan, for the sake of transparency, I do own CTRM. Uh, I've been in it a long time, and I've been getting my butt kicked in it. And it is, it's a, it's a super speculative play. I've said that in all of the videos that I've made on it. I just think that it has good upside potential. So for uh, transparency, I do own CTRM. That's the only stock that I own out of all of these stocks that we talked about in here. So with that, folks, um, don't forget, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, hit the like button. How many likes do we have, Joey? Let's see if we can get to 200 before we get off. If you haven't hit the like button already, please do so. Again, it helps our algorithm to get this video out to a lot more other people. Um, every month we do these. Um, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon. All of that. All of that. All of that. So, until the next time, folks. Adios, arrivederci, ciao, au revoir, sayonara, aloha to all my uh, um, uh, peeps. Salam. Shalom. Yasu. See ya. <laughs> Thank you.